Why do you believe that we must go to Mars? I think there's uh, three reasons why people have to go to Mars. Uh, one is for the science, second is for the challenge, and the third is for the future. The science is going to tell us the truth about the potential prevalence and diversity of life in the universe. The early Mars and the early Earth were twins, where they were both warm, wet planets with CO2-dominated atmospheres. Somehow, chemistry on Earth complexified itself into self-replicating life forms. Did that also happen on Mars? If it did, it tells us that these processes are high probability and probably have occurred on billions of planets throughout the universe. It means the universe is filled with life. If it didn't, it means there was something exceptional about what happened on Earth, in which case we could be totally alone. So this is something that thinking men and women have wondered about for thousands of years, and we can find out the truth about it by going to Mars. And now furthermore, there could also be practical applications here, because if there's a different kind of biology on Mars, which there very well could be, I mean, the, 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 once you... Uh, get into self-replicating organisms. Okay, there's an argument why they should be based on carbon, but RNA and DNA in particular, uh, it could be a different information system which could have huge applications in biotechnology, for example. Second is the challenge. I think that civilizations are like individuals. We grow when we challenge ourselves. We stagnate when we do not. A Humans to Mars program would be a tremendous uh, a positive challenge to every society that chooses to participate, in particular to the youth of every society that participates. It would say to every young person, learn your science and you could be an explorer of new worlds. And out of that, we would get millions of young scientists, engineers, doctors, medical researchers, inventors, technological entrepreneurs, these kinds of people. We doubled the numbers of such people we were producing in the United States during the Apollo program precisely because of the challenge. And this time I think the impact would be greater because science and engineering are open to women today in a way that was simply not the case in, in the 60s. So we not only get millions of little boy scientists making rocket fuel and robots in the basement, we get little uh, millions of little girl mad scientists too, which is a frightening thought, but it has its upside. And, the, and then finally, there's the future. If we do what we can do in our time, which is establish that first human foothold on Mars, then 500 years from now, there will be new nations new branches of human civilization on Mars, and not just on Mars, but on thousands of planets orbiting stars in this neighborhood of the galaxy. New nations with new languages and literatures and heroes and new social systems and innumerable contributions to technology and invention and new tales of great deeds that will inspire people to go further, okay? And we can create that, okay? We're, we're not living at the end of history right now. We're living at the beginning of history. The beginning of history. You're present at the creation. And this is something grand and wonderful that we can create. And if you can create something grand and wonderful, then you should. Now, in 1990, you came up with the Mars Direct Plan to go to the Mars. And in, nine, in 2014, you gave a speech at the NASA Ames Research Center titled Humans to the Red Planet Within a Decade, during which you presented the Mars Semi-Direct Plan, which is a modification of your original plan. Are we going to send the humans to Mars by 2024? We're only two years away. If not, when do you think the humans will go to the Mars? And in this effort to send humans to Mars, how are innovative companies participating and making contributions? Okay. Well, first of all, let me just say, uh, I don't believe in prophecy and destiny. There's nothing that is predestined. And when I said in 2014, humans to Mars in a decade, that wasn't a prediction that we would make it by 2024. That was a statement that we could make it by 2024 if we had chosen to do so. And in fact, we've been 10 years away from sending humans to Mars since about 1969. 
Okay, although then it was 12 years away. That is, NASA in 1969 had plans to send humans to Mars in 1981. And those plans were entirely feasible. They could have been done had we continued with the kind of program we had with Apollo. And unfortunately, at the very moment of the success of the Apollo program, the Nixon administration, which was in charge in the United States at the time, decided to cancel everything. It, would, it was like Christopher Columbus coming back from the New World the first time and Ferdinand and Isabella saying, oh, so what? Who cares about this? Forget it. Get lost, Chris. And that, that's pretty much what happened. But I think we're about 10 years away from getting to Mars now. And, and I think we may be two to three years away from getting a decision to go to Mars. Um, that is, as we speak, they are uh, testing this uh, new kind of reusable heavy lift vehicle called the Starship at Boca Chica in South Texas. They're going to fire all 31 engines within two weeks from now in a ground test. And as soon as they get permission after that, they will go for orbit. And I think there's a good chance they'll try for orbit this year. I think there's a good chance they'll fail the first time. But Elon Musk and his team have shown that they're prepared for failure. That, you know, the, 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 you know, the Falcon 1 failed the first three times. They got it right the fourth time. The first five times they tried to land the Falcon 9, it failed. They got it right the sixth time. The first five times they tried to land the Starship upper stage, it failed. They got it right the sixth time. And, and this, by the way, is a fundamental quality. A great achiever is not someone who never fails. A great achiever is someone who can take a failure and keep pushing until they succeed. That's the mark of a winner, okay? And that's what this SpaceX team has. So I think we'll see Starships actually making it to orbit next year. Might take three or four tries, but they'll do it, okay? And then if this is the reality in 2024 that we have these heavy lift vehicles flying to orbit, the payload capacity comparable to a Saturn V, but at one or two percent the cost because they're reusable, we're going to have somebody elected president in 2024. And if that's the reality, you're going to look at this thing and say, here's this guy who wants to send people to Mars. If we got together with him, could we make it by the end of my second term? And the answer will be yes. Say, well, is it going to cost a trillion dollars? No, we can probably do it within NASA's budget because he's got the, the primary system necessary, the flight system. There's a bunch of other stuff that's needed. There's surface systems, vehicles, uh, nuclear reactors, which by the way is something I think Korea should step up and provide because you have an excellent nuclear industry here um, and are well positioned to be the leader in space nuclear power. Uh, but if we and our allies got together with Elon Musk, can we get to Mars by 2032? And the answer will be yes. And so, well, then why not do it? And I think we'll do it. I think that by clearing enough of the path that people can see that there's a way to do it, that by making it practical, Musk will make it sellable.